What's up Luxo fam? Just wanted to give a little disclaimer before the start of this video saying that there was a bit of a glitch in the matrix with my video stream. So if please bear with us and enjoy the show. Hey, what's up everybody? Yellow Turtle here with my co-host Beef. Welcome to another episode of the Luxo Fam Podcast, brought to you by Keys. The Luxo Fam Podcast is meant to be a short and informational show where we provide some takes on the latest Luxo news in the space. Today, we will be discussing Luxo's upcoming presence at ETH Warsaw, Luxo's first ever official meetup in Berlin, and some Web3 social media built on Luxo in the last build-up hackathon. But before we dive into all this, beef... How are you today? I am doing fantastic. Took the little guy to the park again. So much more fun now that he can he can walk, you know, kind of, <laughs> and stumble around the park. So that takes out a lot of his energy and, and helps me get him down for naps. So yeah, super, super grateful for that. How's your day going? Oh, it's going great. It's going great. It's a little bit rainy here today, but it's a, it's a nice light rain. I like it. Yeah, we need the rain, right? <laughs> that's what, that's what people always say. <laughs> All right, you want to dive into it? Yeah, let's hop right in. So first up on the agenda this week is talking about ETH Warsaw. Could you talk a little bit about the significance of Luxo's involvement in ETH Warsaw specifically, and then also the growing sponsorship presence at all the other ETH events as well? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Warsaw is pretty cool. First off, shout out Warsaw. Get some Zeppi Konki if you're in the area. I love that. It's like this super cool like uh, street sandwich, open-faced. You know, your boy Beef loves food, so I had to do that. But Luxo is taking a different approach going to ETH Warsaw than like their prior engagements. They're doing more of a, like a developer-focused approach, trying to really show the tech behind Luxo. You know, we've been pushing the narrative and trying to get the information out there about our overall picture. And now we're actually getting down to the nitty gritty of what powers Luxo. So yeah, it's it's super exciting. And I know that they've got some keynote speakers lined up too. Uh, you know about that? Oh yeah. So there's three keynote speakers from the Luxo team at ETH Warsaw this week. ETH Warsaw actually kicks off today, which is the day of the recording, August 30th, but this will be released tomorrow, which will be the second day. But the three keynote speakers are Callum, Hugo, and Bianca. Callum and Hugo are both smart contract developers at Luxo, and Bianca is the head of developer relations. So we'll kind of break down each of their talks a little bit here. So Callum's talk, which is happening today on August 30th. So if you're listening to this now, uh, you can catch the recording, I'm sure on YouTube, but he'll be discussing building gasless D apps with Luxo universal profiles. So that's been a big, big talk in the Luxo ecosystem for quite some time. The idea of having gasless transactions and using D apps without having to worry about how much gas is in your wallet. You know, for anyone who's been using I guess any blockchain, but mostly Ethereum, they know that gas fees can be insane. And Luxo has made a point to prove that it's possible to make gasless transactions happen. Uh, and how do you do this? Well, there's multiple ways to do this. You could have a subscription-based fee that people pay every month, and that goes towards covering your transaction fees. You could also cover your transaction fees via the rewards you receive from staking. So there's different ways to cover the, the transaction fees. And the reason why this is a novel idea is because if you've ever gone to any department store or pretty much any store nowadays, and you try to pay with a credit card or a debit card, there is a hidden fee that people don't see underneath the, underneath the hood. There's usually a credit card fee that the companies cover on their side to improve the user experience at the store. And uh, so this is an, a web two idea that was not carried over into web three that the Luxo team is trying to bring back to help with this user experience. Uh, so moving on to the second talk from Hugo, 
he'll be talking about building the next generation of D apps with universal profiles. Um, and Hugo has been on the Luxo team for quite some time. Uh, I met him in New York City at, NF at NFT NYC about two years ago, which seems so long now, but he'll be discussing how to build a D app with a universal profile and also making it backward compatible for traditional blockchain wallets. So, you know, D apps don't have to decide between, you know, accepting Ethereum wallets or universal profiles. They can have both, which is the ideal world that we want to live in. I know that, you know, people using the testnet and the browser extension that's been released throughout, you know, the past year or so it's been updated. There's always been the issue with having to uninstall MetaMask or, or turn it off in, in your browser. And that's no longer, there will be ways for people to have both wallet and universal profile in their browser and use them on DApps, you know, with ease. And then moving on to the third talk with Bianca, head of developer relations, she'll be talking about the role of developer communities, which is a really interesting idea. And it's definitely been an idea that Keys has tossed around as well throughout some throughout the years in the sense that, you know, how do we create an environment for developers to come in and use each other as a resource, learn from each other and build really cool D apps, right? So it can be a little bit tough to reach these developer communities, especially from Keys' perspective, where we're a little more non-technical, more on the non-technical side. However, these developer communities are super important for the growth of this ecosystem. And, you know, getting these developers to work together, learn about Luxo, learn about the, the novelty of these standards uh, is key to, you know, the growth and the amount of development that is done on this blockchain. So I think that all three talks are going to be really, really interesting. I'm super excited to see that we have three kind of new keynote speakers compared to the, the normal Fabian and Marjorie talking. Even though I love their talks, uh, it's nice to hear from other people on the team and get some different perspectives and get some insight onto you know, their journey and you know what they're most excited about at Luxo. I know that we've talked to Jean in the past on this podcast and to Boost as well in the last episode. And it's always just really interesting and really nice to hear from the team about their experiences overall. So, you know, Beef, I just rambled for about five minutes. <laughs> Would you like to <laughs> add anything on this topic? <laughs> yeah, I'm super, super pumped to hear Hugo give a, a talk. I wonder how long these talks are going to be. You know, is it going to be like another 15 minute, you know, stint or are we going to get a little bit more meat on the bones, you know, uh, TBD? But yeah, I mean, I've only caught Hugo talking on Luxholm's interview, which I had to read the captions for, and it was a good one. Never heard Colm speak. And then Bianca, I caught her uh, on the, the Warsaw Twitter space. So yeah, I'm super excited to hear these new, new talks, hear the developments and kind of, hopefully it's a little bit more technical so I can keep trying to learn and then, you know, listen to it again and and again, <laughs> and again, because that's kind of how my brain works is I got to, I got to listen to something or see it like multiple times before I can completely kind of comprehend it. But yeah, I'm super excited. This is a really good event. I think it, it'll definitely pull more builders into our space. And that's, that's what we want, right? That combined with the hackathon, we'll be setting up pretty nice, I think, to, to steal some talent from various places. So yeah, besides that. Was there anything else they had going on? Yes. Middle of September, September 14th, will be the first official Luxo meetup at Luxo's Hub, which I want to get into after as well, because I don't know what that means, and it makes me really excited. But yeah, this is another developer-focused meetup, right? So, you know, with the ETH Warsaw and this developer meetup, I think the team is, I mean, they always have focused on creating these developer relations and getting these standards in the hands of builders, but now it seems like they're really, you know, making some strides and really, you know, putting in the effort to try to reach these developer communities and try to create these developer communities so that, you know, people can build with Luxo standards. Yeah, for sure. This, this looks like, again, it's just another opportunity to try and make it more about the developers you know, giving them the opportunity to work on things together, IRL, and to talk about it. So it looks like they're going to have like workshops and community engagement opportunities. 
And it's also Fabian's birthday. So <laughs> shout out Fabian. Happy birthday. But yeah, this is pretty cool. I am jealous again because apparently there's a dance floor in Berlin. So they're going to hit up some sick clubs, I'm sure. And once again, I will be trapped overseas, like just imagining what that's like. So one of these days, I am going to tear up the dance floor in Europe. And it's going to be with Luxo, with the squad. And it's going to be awesome. (laughs) (laughs) I can't wait for that. Hell yeah. It seems like there's always going to be a dance floor at any Luxo event, (laughs) which is exciting. So what do you think this Luxo hub is? Uh, I think I think this is what they're calling it. So just like um, the event, I guess. Uh, it's the first one. And it, I think it's just like kind of what I had already said, how they're going to have all these different workshops and just kind of informational sessions to kind of help the developers figure out the LSPs, figure out like what's possible, you know, kind of open their eyes to the ecosystem and having it be developer facing, you know what I mean? Like they've done stuff for, for non-technicals now for a while. And I think they're finally like, you know, throwing it in a different gear to get, to get the new talent into the pool. Yeah. So that we can, as users really enjoy kind of what they're going to come up with. What do you think? I like that perspective on it. When I first read it, it seemed like, you know, it's taking place at their office, right? The the building that they always look so cool in all their videos. And to me, it seemed like they're opening up a part of their office for almost like communities within Luxo, people building on Luxo. Uh, maybe it's a space that could be rented out from time to time um, to kind of just work in this environment with these other technical people work alongside some of the smart contract developers you know this is pure speculation and i you know i I think it'd be novel i think it'd be really cool like (laughs) opening up almost like a a luxo we work that like you could schedule and like get some one-on-one time with maybe some people on the team ask questions get some feedback in person I think that would be really cool. And again, pure speculation. I don't know if this is true, but that's where my mind went when I first saw Luxo's hub. That would be so dope. And like, you know, like the collaboration that could happen, you know, once everything's released and the team has got a little bit more time on their hands to be more, you know, like more of a resource for the developers, that would be so cool. Yeah, I I wonder if that's what's happening. Hopefully we'll get some clarification on it and some more details down the line. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be some more information shared, you know, probably post the first meetup. Yeah, and we'll see how it goes. All right, so shifting gears a little bit, I don't know if you saw Common Ground's announcement, but could you shed some light on, you know, what Common Ground, what you think Common Ground has coming down the pipeline and, you know, what it could potentially do for Web3? Yeah, so we've kind of heard Common Ground come up a couple different times. Fabian's kind of spoke to it. Apparently, it's kind of like a a, a Luxo Universal Profile utilizing version of Discord. So that sounds super promising. So it's interesting to see how, you know, how this unfolds, kind of what it is exactly. But Common Ground actually tweeted on the 28th, GM, big announcements this week. Stay tuned, keep building, stay hydrated, always. Stay hungry, stay curious, smash that like button. And, you know, with the events of this week, you know, and everything coming up with Luxo, you you really can't help but, you know, wonder what connections are there? Is this, does this have to do with, Luxo, are they are they going to announce something or release something? You know, lots of speculation. Yeah, Fabian has talked about it in a few different talks. I think a few different Twitter spaces that you know we can expect to see a Web three version of Discord from Common Ground. And Fabian and Florian both live in Berlin and have a history of being pretty close friends. So I can't imagine that Florian has no idea about Luxo and no idea about universal profiles. 
That doesn't mean that their first uh, version of this Web3 Discord will be using universal profiles. We could expect something to be you know, on Ethereum first and then slowly transition over. But like we talked about earlier, with this backwards compatibility, there's the opportunity to use both and have you know Ethereum users and universal profile users or, or MetaMask users and universal profile users using the same dApps and, and interacting in the same space. So that's a really interesting concept. To, again, don't want to speculate too hard here, but you know I'm staying hungry and I'm staying hydrated for this announcement for sure. <laughs> Hydro homies. Yeah, so something else that's kind of been hot recently <clears throat> is friend.tech. It's kind of been blowing up, actually. It's it's a new app that's on base with different shares, or I think they changed the name to keys of like different uh, people who follow you. You want to kind of dive into that for us and kind of explain in case anybody missed missed it? Yeah. I know if you're in the Web3 space and you missed out on friend.tech last week, I don't know where you were. Hopefully you're on vacation or something because it was all over Twitter. (laughs) I personally haven't used the platform yet. I don't necessarily agree with everything that, you know, has happened with it so far. You know, if you're looking for an in-depth analysis on friend.tech, last week's wrap-up episode hosted by Ethelorian and Alt Anonymous, they went pretty in-depth for about 30 to 35 minutes on friend.tech and just kind of its strengths, limitations, and areas of concern. But to quickly sum it up, they the, the idea of having a Web3 social media where people can invest in the creators that they support and follow and directly, you know, allow them to create revenue without having to go through the trials and tribulations of you know, getting monetized on YouTube or trying to get monetized on something like TikTok. There's tons of thresholds that you have to meet and a bunch of hoops you have to jump through in order to get there. So this kind of puts the power in the hands of the creators, which I think is a really, really cool idea. And it's a step in the right direction for Web3 social media. However, there are some red flags with friend.tech that, you know, need to be recognized. Um, For one, the founders are anonymous, which happens in this space, but you know, you definitely put your your guard up when you don't know who the founders are. Allegedly, they have worked on other projects that kind of failed. There was already a security breach where people found out which wallets were connected to which Twitter accounts, which in theory isn't the worst thing to happen, right? Because the blockchain is public. That research and that information could have been found out regardless, but it's definitely a little bit harder than, you know, someone just getting access to their backend and essentially looking at a a spreadsheet of wallet to Twitter profile. So that is an area of concern as well. The founders didn't seem too concerned about it. They were kind of nonchalant about it, which I didn't really agree with because the name of the game in, in this space is security. So, and again, it didn't really create a level playing field. It wasn't like, you know, new creators came to this platform and had the ability to monetize and, you know, make millions. It was creators who already had followings on other platforms coming to friend.tech, kind of using themselves almost like a Ponzi scheme. And then, you know, people buying up their shares and then selling them off for higher value. There's also an issue with bots, obviously, you know, if you're competing with bots, you're probably going to get beat out. So bots would come in, buy up all the shares for, you know, higher level names, and then make a profit like that, selling back to the, you know, people on the lower end. And, you know, there's where the constant token scheme of Web3 comes into play. So it seemed like it was a repeat of history, but also, again, a step in the right direction towards the idea of Web3 social media and actually putting the power back into the content creator's hands. So with that, do you want to discuss the concept of like direct rewards for creators and like that innovative notion of followers having a stake in a content creator's future? Yeah, I mean, I didn't really agree with friend.tech really serving as the best example of this. I agree with you. It kind of felt like users or, you know, certain celebrities were kind of 
joining just to kind of dump on their extremely loyal fan base. I mean, if you saw the activity recently, it's like gone down considerably from where it was a week or two ago. So it's just kind of like, congratulations, you know, you played yourself. I really, I really don't think that that's going anywhere because I don't think friend.tech really took the time to, to develop it out. They just kind of took that base idea, which is kind of exciting and did excite people and didn't really continue to, to develop it out, I think. Now, a project that's completely different and, and, and I don't think is going at all to try and be a Ponzi scheme is what Leadfoot has been working on with Upturn. He is creating this project and he actually won first place in the build a hackathon for the fame category, which was like the fashion, art, music, entertainment category. And their approach empowers artists with the creation of distinctive artist tokens, enabling them to share these tokens with their loyal fan base. Um, and I think they're still figuring out like how to make sure that legally it's applied, but there was talks of some sort of or receiving the artist tokens, you would receive some sort of kickback or something along those lines. Right. So I believe that these artist tokens are non-financial to start. So that kind of removes the idea that it's a security. It's less monetary based and more of just loyalty and support based. So I'm sure that these tokens, where they're non-monetary, could be redeemed for some type of reward. Again, no idea. All I know about Leadfoot and Upturn is that they're working hard and they want, at the end of the day, to put the power back in the creator's hands. Uh, and kind of nothing else, you know, if you break it down, there's nothing else to it. They want the creators to have full power of the things that they create. I agree. Thank you for throwing me that life life vest right there. And for anybody who's really curious, you can go and check out the breakdown of the, the demo video for Upturn, which is pretty sick too. And check out our pod that we had with them maybe about a month or two ago, where he kind of dived into it too and did a much better job explaining the project than I did just now. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and on that note too, on the Web3 social media note, I'd love to shout out Luxo, created by the guys over at Drops, Carlos and Antonio. They were also a winner of a category at the Luxo Build Up number one hackathon for the social media category. And what they built is a decentralized social media feed that is essentially a block explorer mashed with like a Twitter or X, I guess. So instead of looking at Etherscan, where, you know, there's tons of hashes and wallet addresses and transfers, it looks like a, an Excel sheet from the 1990s, in my mind, if you look at Etherscan versus Luxo as this beautiful, beautiful user experience and interface where you can see the transactions from between people. You can, if it's an NFT transfer, you can actually see the picture that was transferred or the art that was transferred. You can like and comment on the transactions. So we'll link it in the description, but there's a article written by our very own Web3 Rob G, who is the director of the Pink Pill and Wrap Up podcast, where he deep dives into Luxo a little bit and provides a really nice summary of what the interface does. He worked with the guys from Universal Page to actually transfer some NFTs and comment and like to show the use cases of the platform. So I'm really excited to see you know, how that's developed further into the future. I'm sure that the guys over there are still working on it. They're amazing, amazing developers and are working on a lot of different projects. So I'm, I'm very excited to see where this goes. And again, I think Web3 social media will be built on Luxo and with Universal Profiles. I definitely agree. I'm really excited to see any aesthetic changes that they've done with Luxo and kind of, I love the ability that they're kind of like going to convert, you know, what'll be happening on the block explorers for Luxo and then make it say more humanized messages so that the user kind of understands what's happening. 
Yeah, and that article by Rob G was awesome. It really broke everything down. It was done about a year ago. So, you know, bear in mind a lot could have changed with the protocol since then, but I'm super excited to see where they've taken it. I know that I'll be using it for sure because I was like, wow, this is this is so great. The, again, there's a demo video for this as well. At the So if you like Google Luxo and then build up hackathon winners, it's a Medium article. And then it kind of breaks all of these winners down. But uh, yeah, super excited for Luxo. Yep, that demo video is actually in that article as well, which will be linked in the description. Awesome. So moving on to the last topic we have here today, Mince's meme. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Yeah, so uh, Meme Master Mince, he's been <laughs> cooking stuff up constantly. I feel like he's got a new like celebrity <laughs> saying something about Luxo and he's just kind of like reply guying all of these posts and saying Luxo solves this, you know, like <laughs> up oh, should be using Luxo, you know, <laughs> random, random people. But yeah, he's doing a great job with it. He's been making those for a while now. And then, you know, all of us in keys have been kind of playing our hands with the memes. Memes seem to resonate, you know, everybody likes a good meme. And, you know, Mince is really passionate about it. And he actually made a like community site where you could share your memes. And then he kind of wanted these to serve as kind of like, you know, crediting the creator and then kind of historically. So, you know, a year or two from now, we can look back at these memes and just kind of like laugh, you know, like look at how OG we were. Like nobody was using these memes but us. <laughs> but now, <laughs> you know, everybody recognizes. So, yeah, like we'll include a, a link for his site, but it's, you know, an open invitation for everyone who wants to contribute and utilize the content. And if you're having trouble finding it or you want to do it and you're not sure what to do, just hit us up in the Keys Discord. Tag Mints or tag me or, you know, Turtle. So, you know, we'll get you, we'll get it sorted out. But yeah, come on, guys, like join in, like create some memes, right? Yeah, uh, I think it was a you know beautiful effort. He took it upon himself to create his own website and post all the memes and he's taking community submissions. He's also allowing the community to go and, you know, right click, save these memes and, and spread them out throughout Twitter. So, and I really think it's a, a great community initiative and it's a step in the right direction towards, you know, getting people to, to listen and learn about Luxo. So on that note, that brings us to our last topic. And do you want to sign us off beef? Heck yeah. So as always guys, remember, None of this was financial advice. It's just a couple of dudes talking about what we love. And make sure to like and subscribe on this video. Every subscription helps us get one step closer to making these podcasts uh, have longevity in the Luxo ecosystem.